So here we are in lesson three, again, accessing local storage and databases. Lots to cover today. Lots to cover with both uh, local file access uh, to your system from in your mobile application. There's uh, directories that you can uh, access. There's a unit called the IO Utils unit that will help. We look at INI files, FireDAC, that's our database access components for SQL and in memory data sets. I'll talk a little about Interbase some samples and uh, show you I'm still moving along on the continued development of the mobile app for business using the MAST SQL uh, interface database. And uh, I'll be, I, I need to put those sample project zip files up for you to follow along. But at the end of the six lessons, I'll have the complete example and the deconstructed example follow up for all of you to go through uh, along the way after the fact, and also with everything that you're learning. Now, in a mobile application, there's local file access in certain directories that you can get to, your documents directory and the home path. You can get that and you can get and iterate through directories and subdirectories. You might have in your documents path some other folders with some files, maybe some bitmap files or some data files, text files, document files, whatever it might be. So there are lots of file access and directory access and testing to see if a file exists in system IOUtils. So I won't go through every method. There are a lot of them, hundreds of methods that you can use. And that gets you to your home path of your application, the documents path. And in mobile systems, every application is in its own little sandbox world. And outside of that, if you want to get to other applications on your on your mobile device, you'll need to use third-party components or APIs. So if you want to get to your contacts information, the music information and things of that kind, and there's a mobile sample you can take a look at. It's in the mobile samples folder, media subfolder. It's called the music player and it has code and it has API examples for going down inside and finding your albums, your, your uh, artists, your playlists and and manipulating those. So it's a full music player written in C++ that you can uh, take a look at and you'll see it in other, at another example of how to go into the the file systems that are on your mobile device using uh, using the APIs. The other thing is we can use is the path operations that are in the IOUtils. And you'll see that in uh, some of the samples that I'm going to show you on the database side today. And also we'll use that in our business uh, marine adventures application we build up. And what we do here is, is we're going to find out where is the database. In this case, one of the samples that I'm going to show you is this to-do list or task list uh, database. And so to get to that task list and set the database parameter, we use system IOUtils T path, get documents path. So that'll get us on Android to assets internal and on iOS, it'll get us to our startup documents folder. And then plus path delim, that's a predefined for each platform uh, path character forward slash backslash depending on Windows. Uh, iOS, Android, and then plus the task.gdb file in the case of the sample that is the to-do list example. So we have this if def code that we can put in. You either put it inside of your form create event handler, or uh, I've put it in one example on the before connect. So if I have my, when you see my database connection component, I'll say before I connect, let's go and set the database file name and path to whatever it is for the device that I'm on. In this case, for iOS and Android, get documents path will return the right thing and use the right path to limb. So there's a quick example, and you'll, you'll see that throughout the samples on the database side, you'll see this uh, repeating pattern for access. When we're at design time, we're in the Windows IDE and we're accessing the database through our Windows IDE system if we want to see data live at design time. But at runtime, we've got to go to the system path where in our application where these databases get put and these other files get put. Another file that you'll probably want to use in your application, especially if you have some 
some application settings that you want to save. You could put them just in a text file or some kind of your own storage file. You could put them in a database even and then load them in. Uh, some people will use INI files, and there's a TINI file class that you can use. The nice thing about INI files is they have these sections and these key name equals value pairs, and you'll see that oftentimes used for for settings, for connecting the cloud, maybe username, passwords, whatever it might be. You might you might encrypt those in some way so that they're hard to find and, and do things of that kind. And the INI file um, class allows you to read and write different different data types. So read string, write string, read bool, write bool, read a stream, um, write a date, write a time, uh, read the section, see if a section exists. You can also then put this together with the um, with the IOUtils functions to see, is there an INI file that currently exists? And if not, you might have code in your application that would set some key value pairs and then write out the section and write out the, the name value pairs using the INI file methods. So down here, I've included an example of a of an INI file setting that I have for my MAST SQL, where I have my username password for my local database and I have the path uh, on my machine. For example, on my Windows machine, I set the database equal to the path of the MAST SQL GDB file that is my customer and orders and parts and employees database. So INI files, uh, you'll see those used a lot here and there, but again, it's up to you to decide whether you wanna use them or not. So it's another, built-in class or set and set of methods that you can use if you need this kind of thing. Now on Windows, we have things like the registry. I to test it, but it's there and some people use it. Um, we don't have anything like that on these mobile devices. So, uh, you know, in our settings section, an I, an I, I and I file works very nicely. Now for database access, uh, we use FireDAC and FireDAC is a multi-platform database access set of components. They're non-visual components. They work very nicely with FireMonkey applications. They work with C++ and Object Pascal. And there's a whole set of components that connect via the client library of the database vendor. So on my Windows machine, I might have a Microsoft SQL client, an Oracle client, a MySQL client. Um, and then I want to connect to the backend database. So FireDAC provides all of that capability for the metadata processing, for accessing the data, for treating tables as tables, treating using SQL queries, and so on, across a wide, across a wide range of databases that are supported. And you can see the list and version numbers in the doc wikis online, and I've got links to all of that information. Uh, on Windows and other devices, Platforms that have ODBC systems, you can also use an ODBC driver to get to other types of databases that may not be directly supported uh, by FireDAC. Uh, and these are just a list of the databases that are supported, and again, more via ODBC. So, um, you know, Interbase, SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, IBM DB2, and so on are all provided for MySQL uh, with FireDAC connectivity. Again, as long as you have the client library. On mobile, we directly support through through APIs and libraries that are static libraries or LinkedIn, Interbase XZ3 in the form of IB Lite and IB to go. More about those in a bit. SQLite comes with iOS and Android built into the operating system. So FireDuck can get to, to the SQLite API and you can put SQLite databases uh, on your uh, on your mobile devices and, and work with them. There is a whole set of components. I'm not gonna go through every one. They're broken down into four different categories. There's the core of FireDAC. Most of the time you'll use the FD connection component. You use the FD query, maybe the FD table, uh, maybe the FD stored proc to connect to a stored procedure if you have one in your SQL database. Uh, FD mem table, it's an in-memory data set that you can work with. If you don't have a physical database on the outside, you can just use FD mem table, create fields, populate them with data, and so on. 
uh, services, things like Backup Restore, integrate with the backend APIs of the different databases. The physical link are there to make a connection between the components and the underlying client library that's available uh, on different platforms. And again, on mobile, we have client library you can link in currently for Interbase and for SQLite. The last thing are these FireDAC UI components. We, we need those to tell FireDAC, for example, most of the time you'll use the wait cursor. What wait cursor? So if you're doing a long running SQL query, maybe you have a little SQL icon, a wait cursor that would pop up to tell the users that some query is going on. And so we, we use some of those UI. Those are the things to surface up what's going on in FireDAC to the users in your applications. Mostly we'll use the, the GUI wait cursor uh, as a component. So let's go through a few of the components real quick, and then we'll start looking at some samples. Uh, FD connection is the connection component. You can either connect to a, a file where you define the path to the file. Uh, you can also use the, the this built-in FD manager where there's a set of connection uh, definitions stored in an INI file. So if you have uh, that on on your mobile platform, that INI file, if it's found, you can then refer to a connection by a name. For example, maybe uh, customer orders or f a file uh, data or order data, whatever the name of that database connection is. And in the database connection, then you define uh, the different fields and properties of the connection. Otherwise, you could just store into the properties in the FD connection component, and you'll see that in, in a moment. Um, you can also just write code to connect, create, in a sense, a, uh, a connection to a database without having a definition file, uh, without it being managed by the file definition manager, the FD manager. So you have three different choices um, to have the connection file or not. And where the connection file is, let's go, let me close a couple things that I left open here. I don't need that. Uh, if I go over to my, let's close this file. Let's go to my desktop and let's open up, um, uh, let's see, in Embarcadero Studio, there's a FireDAC directory. And here's an example of this FD connection uh, definitions INI file. And if we look at it, it's got, uh, here's the section in the square brackets. So an employee is an interbase database. There's the driver, driver ID, what protocols used to get to it. Uh, SQLite is just a, a SQLite file. Uh, sometimes it doesn't have to have an extension. Some people will put S3DB for SQLite version 3 or just SDB, but SQLite doesn't care about connection about uh, ex file extensions. And here's our master SQL that we're using in our Marine Adventure example. I've called that MEST SQL. And, and the INI file does several things. If we go into our into our IDE and we go over to the Data Explorer, then we'll see these different connections. We can go and uh, modify them. Now this is the FireDAC connection editor. And so the ed editor allows us to specify uh, different driver IDs. So here's all the different drivers that are supported. Uh, specify if there's a connection predefined over here either by dropping a connection component down or using the Data Explorer, more about the Data Explorer in a moment. So I've created a MAST SQL uh, connection definition name. And then down here, we can set all the different parameters. We can even test to see if we can connect to the database based on the information that's set, database username, password, uh, and other SQL dialect and things of that kind. So if we say file new, FireMonkey mobile application C++, let's just put down a desktop application. We'll put an FD connection component. And then we can right mouse click and bring up the connection editor. And again, here's the same connection editor. Whether we have an INI file or not, I could just say the driver ID I want, for example, is interface. And then I can go in here and put the, uh, the database in. I don't have to create a connection name. I can just go and put the path to my database, set the username and password if it has one, and other parameters, and be done with it. So that connection editor is there for you to use, um, and it hooks with the TFD connection component. 
if you have a database that has tables in it, what databases don't, well, yeah, most do, uh, you can use the TFD table component in FireDoc. The TFD table component will simply bring in all of the rows of data. And there's two operations mode. One is standard mode, which just brings you through the whole result set. It under covers, it generates a single select statement, but as far as you're concerned, it looks like a table. Get me the next row, the next row, the next row. There's an option in FD table to set up a live data window. Uh, and that data window mode lets you specify a window inside of a very large, for example, database table that you can move bidirectionally back and forth within side. So it keeps it in memory. Uh, you can navigate around. Uh, doesn't you bring doesn't bring all of the data over at a time. You may only want a little bit of the table, but you'd like the table up based operations. So you, you can use the live data window mode of the FD table. The other option for accessing uh, data is the TFD query. This is a SQL query component. It has a property called SQL for the SQL command. And you can put that in. You can write code to set the properties of the FD query. You can also use the query editor to sort of test uh, queries that take place. And you can call a method called exec SQL if you want to do in code. For example, maybe you're going to read through, uh, do a query, execute it. Then for the row set that comes back, go and populate a list view using code, for example. You can also uh, have parameterized queries, uh, and we'll see that in a little bit with FD query. So for example, back here, if we set up our connection, Let's go and connect it to our uh, our masked SQL database and make sure it, it should be found. There we go. All right, so that's set up. Now we go and put a TFD query down, and it, it already sees that there's an FD connection, so it'll set the connection property. If you have multiple databases you're connecting to, you'll put down multiple FD connections and then set and choose whichever connection it is. So then we'll go and uh, set a SQL statement, select star. Well, we could do it that way through the object inspector. Another way is to uh, activate the query, make sure we're connected, Ad activate the connection, right mouse click, bring up the query editor. Now we're connected to our database. So we can, for example, see what the structure is. Uh, so we've got the metadata columns, uh, data type, and so on. Let's go and say select star from customer, and we'll execute the query. Now down here in the query editor, we can see the customer data showing up. So we can see that we've got uh, good data uh, with the column names, customer number, and so on, and then we're okay. So now that, that SQL statement has been set by the query editor, and we can feel good that our that our query will execute, we can set it to true and then do something in the user interface. And we'll see that in a moment, All right? There's also an FD mem table and the FD mem table allows you to load data and save data to disk, but use the semantics of, uh, of a table to step through the rows. Uh, so FD mem table sits in memory and it can work with a database. You can load up, for example, uh, load up a data either by defining the fields at in code and their types. So here's like field one, this code down here, make that an integer type, um, create another field, FD2, make it a string type, and then write some code that would uh, append to the memory table whatever data you wanted for strings going through each of the rows that you find, for example. Uh, over on this side, this is an example of having a query that is coming from a SQL database and then taking that that data and uh, and moving it into a memory table. So you go into the query, uh, set the FDMEM tables data to the data coming from the query after you did the fetch all of the rows, and then the data and metadata will come into your FDMEM table. And you can start at the first and then do whatever you want to do with the data, treating it as an in-memory table. You can then write that data. So for example, you might populate some data and then save it locally. There's a, there's a save and a load method on FD mem table. And you can save it to XML format or a FireDAC binary format. There's also an option to 
to have it automatically figure out the file format based on a file name extension you might provide. So if it ends in .xml, it'll automatically save it in XML. Otherwise, you can tell the save uh, what format to, to save it to. And then load, it queries the, the type of data that you've saved, XML or binary, and it'll do the right thing on the load. So it's a way of persisting into memory the data, saving it locally, come back and loading it up again. You can make changes to the data in the memory table, and you can then post those changes back to the up, up, un, the uh, database you might have connected to. There's a cached update mechanism. So FD mem table is worth exploring. You can also do fat master detail relationships. It takes too long to read all this, so I put it there for reference. I'm going to show you an example here in a quick moment. Uh, it's not too hard. You set put two query components and set a couple properties and you have a relationship between master and detail. All right, the last thing I, I quickly showed you is the data explorer and we can use this data explorer uh, in several ways. One is just to look at our different databases uh, that we have connections to. And we can also drag, drag and drop objects. So for example, if I wanted to put the employee uh, table on our form, we just drag and drop it down on the form, and now I've got an employee table component using the query. It already knows the FD connection, so we can go in here and uh, and see the query. It already put in select star from employee, so we can execute it, and here's the employees that are in our master uh, SQL uh, Marine Adventures database. So we can use the Data Explorer to drag and drop things. You can even drag uh, fields down if you want to and do something with those. So. Um, it's a nice help. It's also just an explorer to look at. You can There's some other commands. You can view the data uh, over here in, in a window, just navigating from the data explorer. And, and uh, Stephen Ball is going to do a skill sprint tomorrow on Tuesday about using the data explorer with FireDAC. So you might uh, check that out tomorrow at 6, 11, and 5 p.m. or the replay for it. All right. So for local databases, I mentioned SQLite is here in mobile, and we've got this interbase. It's the full interbase XE3 feature set in a static library that you can link in. It's free to deploy. Gives you full ANSI SQL 92. Uh, doesn't have any encryption. Uh, has one transaction active at a time. We also have a commercial version called interbase to go which gives you full secure encryption, full SQL 92, multi-transaction, uh, everything that you need. Uh, the IB Lite is limited to, I think it's 100 megabytes uh, for a database file over here, interbase to go big databases on your local machine. Uh, in SQLite, there's really simple data storage. It's not ANSI SQL 92, uh, but it's, it's included. Uh, I would use SQLite in a moment because it's full SQL that I want to operate on. Now, I included slides on Interbase XZ3 about all of its features. It's a full uh, mobile desktop server edition, runs on Linux, on, on OS X, on Windows, and so on. So you can take a look at all the features there and on the Interbase page. This is probably a good summary. If you want to embed, there's the to-go and IB Lite edition. There's a desktop edition uh, that you can go. The trial comes with uh, the to-go edition for 30 days and also with the IB Lite uh, in the purchase edition. So you can do, again, free deploy to as many users as you want with IB Lite in as many applications as you want. One other thing to mention is project deployment. You need to figure out a way to get your database uh, onto your machine. So we use the project deployment options and we'll need to add any feature files that are associated with certain databases like Interbase, for example, uh, and or SQLite. So let's take a look at some let's take a look at some samples in the samples C++ mobile snippets page. There's two examples: a SQLite and an IB Lite example. So let's go and take a look at those. We'll say open project samples C++ uh, mobile snippets. Let's look at the SQLite version first. Uh, forget about that little thing. All right. So here's the FD connection component. It's uh, it's talking to a SQLite database, that SQLite database. Uh, let's go and find a place where we can find it. So it's in samples, uh, CPP, mobile snippets, uh, SQLite, uh, and or data. The great thing is if it can't find 
the file. If it doesn't exist when we deploy it, it'll get created under the covers. If we look at the source code um, here in our, oh, my mouse is acting up. Okay. In our, uh, let's do it this way. Okay. So here's the, uh, let's go down. Here it is. So before connect on the connection component, there's that code again that says, let's take the, and set the tasks, uh, SQLite 3DB file, uh, wherever it might be in our project deployment. We can go under our project deployment, and then uh, we can take a look and see what settings it, I, I hadn't uh, loaded this one up before, so just so it can find what all the pieces and parts are, it'll, it'll go and compile it uh, at least one time. Okay, so here we've got, uh, the different options here. Here's our uh, SQLite, and we can go and, and set other things. So here's this feature files. And here, let's go and say, for example, that we want, maybe it's interbase or something else that we might need. Nothing special that's there. And uh, then over here, we've got a query. The query, uh, this is a delete SQL query. Let's go and look at the SQL table. So delete from star where task name. This is an example of a, let's zoom this up in the code editor. This is a parameterized query. It says we're gonna give it a task name and then it's going to delete some string that matches that task. All right, and then the insert query. Let's go and look at the insert query. Here it is. It just says insert into the task table the column name is task name and some parameter task that we're going to pass it again. All right. Now let's go back to the source code. When we click on the pl on the add button, well, there's the delete button, but let's go to the add button. When we click on the add button or plus sign, it's going to pop up a qu input query where we can give it a task name. And then it's going to say for that SQL query insert, Using the params by name for the task name, it'll find the task name parameter. We're going to set that equal to the string that comes back uh, from this uh, pop-up query for the task that we want to add. We're going that gets set in the parameter. Then we'll just call exec SQL and we'll refresh and fill up the list uh, using bi live bindings to get the new tasks that are currently in. The, the task database. And on the delete button, we'll, we'll just, for whatever string is selected in a list box, the text, we'll set that to the task name. And then we'll set the parameter for that task string, call the exec SQL on the delete, do a refresh and refill, all right? The other sample is the Interbase Lite version. So let's go and open that project. Uh, it's up here under Mobile Snippets, Fire DAC, IB Light. Again, same thing. It's got a connection component. The connection component is talking to Interbase. In this case, it's talking on my local machine to that task GDB file. Uh, here's the table that does the query. Here's the query insert. Again, same code down here. Insert with a parameterized. It's exactly the same code under the covers for both of those. Um, just uh, using Interbase instead, at, well, using FireDAC, but notice the code's exactly the same. It's the beauty of FireDAC. You write one set of code, it works with all the databases that FireDAC supports, as long as you have a database with the right, uh, with the right design. All right. Let me uh, go and look at the project deployment. Okay, let's go here. And then we'll actually go and look at the examples uh, running on iOS and Android devices. <laughs> okay, so I, I clicked plus and I set Interbase to go and that also is IB Lite and said, okay, I need an iOS device static library and an Android static library. And that created into my project deployment list, for example, the uh, uh, Interbase uh, administration uh, file, the license text file and so on. Here's the license text file. So some files get added and the static library gets uh, added to be linked in. So the static library uh, is, is there for you as well. To that, I added two things. I added my registration file for my IB Lite 
when you purchase App Method or C++ Bullet Red Studio, you get the key for the IDE. You'll also get keys for IB Lite and a, and a trial key for Interbase to go. And so we'll add that reg key, which is a text file. And on Android, we'll put it in Assets Internal Interbase License. On iOS, we'll put it in Startup. It's down here. Oh, I, I moved it to the top. It's in Startup Documents Interbase License. The database, which is called TaskGDB, that's going to go in Startup Documents on iOS and on Android. Uh, the Task uh, GDB file is going to go to into dot assets internal. So that's where it's going to find it. And again, before connect, I've got my code here that's going to, if it's iOS or Android, it's going to set the, the database parameter to the path of where I deploy this task GDB. And you saw either startup documents or assets internal. So that code will work on both platforms. And then there's the uh, add and delete, same code for popping up and doing it. So let's go and look at our, our uh, application running on iOS first. Let me bring up, let's minimize this and bring up my, uh, my little reflector viewer. And then we'll uh, we'll connect up my device, and you'll see it there. All right. So here's the Fire uh, Fire DAC IB Lite example. I already put some data in it, but we'll hit the plus sign. Here's this input query pop up. Uh, go to work. Uh, hit OK, and then if we select an item. Uh, the delete button goes and deletes it from the list, and we're back to our application. We can load it back up again uh, and uh, add more data like uh, groceries. For example, oh, I hit cancel. That was good. Groceries. Okay, and add that. And so the insert happens uh, when we finish the input query if we didn't hit the cancel button, right? And let's go back to Windows. And let's uh, get to our desktop. Okay, down here. And let's bring up our little Android viewer and turn it on. And go to our Android device. All right, and again, uh, let me move this up and zoom this view down just a little bit. And here's our Fire IB light. And I had some data in there, eat, uh, let's add something. This is shop, for example, there's the input query. All right, and then that's added to the list and we can go and select one or the other and, and delete it, uh, executing the delete SQL query. So, a couple examples there. Again, the next step for all of you also is to pl continue playing with the MAST SQL. Let me uh, bring up my viewer again, and I'll bring up the Marine Adventures app. Here we go. This one here, I think. So this one is is got, uh, there's our customers for the first time. Last time we just had the tabs. Now we have a list view on the customer tab, which has the list of, of uh of customers, which are member Marine Adventures, uh, sells parts, uh, regulators, and other things to dive shops around the world. Let's go back to the ID and open up this app. Let's reopen the Marine Adventures app. It's a little busy, and we have this uh, separate container called a, a data module where I could put the different, uh, these, these non-visual controls for database access, for example, but I just wanted to do it quickly and I'll clean it up and give it and get it to you later this week. So we've got our master connection. This is that uh, customer order database. It's of type uh, IB and its uh, parameters are, we've got the path on Windows so we can see our data live at design time. And then we've got the query and the query is uh, select star from customers. So there's the customer data. We're also seeing it live at design time on the list view and also on the machine. And then the customer orders query, let's take a look at this one. Let's, uh, let's see, let's uh, go down and look at this SQL statement. 
and let's look at it in the code editor. It says select star from orders where custno, where the orders customer number is equal to some parameterized query. So if we go over and look at our data model uh, in the data explorer, we'll see that the customer table has a custno. And if you remember the data model, there's also a, a one to many uh, orders for customers. So let's go and look at the orders table. It's got the order number as its primary key. It's got also a custno, which is a, a, the customer number. So we can relate back the customer from the customer table to the orders table. So when I say select star from orders where custno equals colon custno, the question is where does that customer number come from for this parameterized query? And it comes from a, two settings in the customer orders query. One is called the master source. So the master source is this data source. The data source is connected to the customer query. So the data source, I gave it a name cust data source. And the data set it connects to is the customer query. So the cut that way, when I set the master source in this customer orders query, then I have the master field shows up because it matches the custno in both the customer table and the orders table. I could choose other fields uh, if I maybe had uh, two columns that made up the, uh, the selection set for example, but in my case, Custno matches the two of them. So with that, if I right mouse click, bring up the query editor, select star orders from customer with that master source set, then I get just the customer orders for customer, the first one we have, for example, Custno uh, 1221, which is the Kauai dive shop, right? So eventually over in the application that we're building, if I select one of those, it's gonna switch over to my the tab which I'll, which I'll finish, which has the Kauai Dive Shop, and then it'll show the list of, of orders, and we can just get back to our customer table uh, as well, All right? Okay, so that's how easy it is to do master detail. Put two queries down, there's your master query, do the orders query, connect it via a data source uh, to the whatever that master field is that defines the relationship, and then we can get our customers on one list and the orders for the customer on another list. All right, so to, to review what, some of what took place in lesson three, you can access local storage for your app using the IOUtils set of methods where you can get the documents path, you could iterate through the files of a directory uh, just get file, next file, next file, next file. In my case, you saw it so that I could get the path and then to the name of the database that I wanted to load. We can use INI files and we'll use those INI file processing in our settings tab in our, in our database application. And then we use FireDAC for both local SQL database access to SQLite and, and Interbase via the IB Lite, which is free to deploy, and, and Interbase to go which is a commercial app license, gives you full encryption of your databases locally. Great thing about Interbase is I copy a database from my Interbase server, copy it to my mobile device, it's the exact same database model, exact same database file. So you could do things like that. And then we're, gonna, we're continuing the work on our, on our business application here in the Kauai Dive Shop and with live bindings, in the live bindings designer, we've got uh, our customer query here, and we're taking the company and putting it into the customer list view. And then we're also taking the, the customer company name and putting it into our group box. And then we'll keep building up the list box down below by getting the customer orders query and starting to bind the order data uh, once we activate the second query. Uh, into our list box, or it could have been a list view again, and so on. All right. Lots of resources for each of the different sections on IOUtils, on the INI files. There's doc wiki entries for all of that. You can take a look at this in the slides. If you don't have PowerPoint, the PDF file is there as well. For uh, FireDAC, lots of information. There's also a great tutorial for using FireDAC with SQLite. It builds up the same uh, to-do list example. Uh, Serena DuPont has been 
building up the to-do list example and extending it into the cloud and elsewhere. So take a look at her blog. And Jim McKeith has been doing blogging about uh, using all the different capabilities inside of the products. So for next time, I want you to take a look at the samples for FireDAC that, that are shipped with the product and are in the trial. Look at the DocWiki articles, uh, play around, add some more tabs and add queries yourself into the using the Master SQL Marine Adventures database. Uh, next time, we're going to work on taking the database that we have are using locally on Windows or locally on mobile, the same Master SQL database, and we're going to put it into a database server using the DataSnap technology. We're going to create a DataSnap REST application server. We're going to put the database over in there and run that on a Windows server uh, somewhere. And then we're going to have uh, our mobile application, which is going to be thin. It doesn't have to carry around the Interbase database. It doesn't have to carry around the Interbase static library. All it needs is the FireDAC components to make a connection to the DataSnap server through HTTP and REST. JSON packets come over. We can make changes to the data on our phone. We can save them on our phone. And then when we're connected back to the DataSnap server uh, on the back end, we can play the changes back to the data snap server and it'll then get to the database where it is could be on linux could be on solaris could be on macintosh could be somewhere it's also the way through data snap if you want to talk to sql server uh, oracle and other systems you can use the same code that you build on your mobile application to connect to your back end okay jim what's happening out there in q a land are there any good guidelines for creating directories in publicly accessible storage to share files between apps? Uh, I don't know if they mean on the mobile device or somewhere else. I mean, if it's on a server, then you can go through the HTTP or TCP protocols to get to data. If it's in the cloud, in lesson six, we'll show you how to put data in parse and convey, uh, put object storage and data storage out there so that multiple applications connect to them. Data snap's probably the best way. We'll cover that in the next lesson where you have your SQL database somewhere, you build this access system and put it on a Windows server for now, a Linux server eventually, and then all your mobile applications can talk via the DataSnap server to get to wherever the database is. Um, I think you're talking about mobile. So I actually gave a link to uh, locate directory locations on there, but as well. Okay. Yep. Um, are there any C++ code samples that demonstrate using DataSnap and FireDAC for connecting to a remote database? We're going to cover that in Lesson 4. And there was also a session on C++ Mobile Day by Pavel Glavatsky, where he did DataSnap uh, with uh, FireDAC Mobile connected to, uh, to an interbase database, I believe it was, with full security. Which is recommended in mobile development, uh, the TFD MEM table or the T client data set? TFD MEM table. More powerful, more flexible. Do you know on INI files, is the section, sections of the INI file supported on both iOS and Android or only on Android? On both. And Windows and OS X as well. For connecting to a remote database, we recommend DataSnap. So here's one. Is... Um, well, data snap, but you could, if you don't, you, you know, if you have a web service, you can connect to that. If it's giving you XML or JSON, then you have to do work yourself. The nice thing about data snap is that we do all the work for you, a little bit of code, but otherwise the components do all the work. So C++ STL, is that available for mobile apps? Not currently. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, we use on, jeez, oh, David. I was thinking boost. I apologize. Yes, it is. On Android, we use the built-in Android, and then on iOS and OS X Windows, we have the we use Dinkumware. Uh, we only have we have boost on Windows and OS X right now, not on mobile yet. That's being worked on. Sorry about that. And that's covered in uh, there's a session in C Mobile Day, which is a conversation with the C compiler team. So they can check out that on C Mobile Day for additional information. Is there a facility to connect to MySQL? <laughs> Not from mobile without using some connection mechanism. Um, right now, we support SQLite and Interbase on mobile, but you could use DataSnap or 
other mechanisms, web services, SOAP servers, REST servers, uh, to connect to MySQL running on other platforms that MySQL runs on. The two local mobile databases we support that are SQL are SQLite and Interbase, uh, IB Lite and Interbase to go. What, um, how did you create your database that you used that you deployed with your application? Uh, there's, a, there's a utility that comes with a product called IB Console, which it lets you create databases and create tables. You can also just use uh, SQL statements and execute SQL statements uh, with a database connection to create a database and create tables. Let's see if uh, if I can do this. If I go up to um, Interbase, if I say add a new connection, test, let's go here. Uh, we can run a SQL script here to create a database um, if you want. And there's other options and so on as well. So, um, but yeah, there's also IB console, which, uh, oh, I don't know where it is somewhere. It's under, uh, inner base IB console. So here you can go in and say, uh, for example, uh, add a database or create a database once you have a connection. So let's uh, connect and I'll watch the time jam. I know. So here, create database, and you can change, give the different options, tell it where to put it, and so on. So yeah, IB console is there for you as well. Um, can we use menus or pop-up menus? Uh, there's no pop-up menus or menus for mobile. You can create your own button bars and a uh, more button, or uh, there's this uh, mech, you know, ways to, to have these kind of pop-out menus created. And Serena DuPont on her blog, uh, has a article about how to create one of those kind of menus. But yeah, we don't have a T main menu component for mobile. Uh, you could just create a toolbar and put a bunch of speed buttons on it, or you can have a sort of slide out, pop out uh, thing. Um, if you want a sort of menu kind of approach. But there's no standard menu component or menu service on mobile devices. So Luca, first question there was, uh, can we generate Intel, Intel Atom uh, APK files? We don't currently. We only generate ARM EABI files for ARM v7 for, for Android. We're taking a look to see whether or not there's enough devices uh, to, to, for us to do the work to do Intel Atom. We have Intel code generators for Intel processors, and we know how to link and create ARM files for Android. So we're taking a look, but there really aren't that many devices yet. So we're spending our time working on some other things like, uh, you know, more functionality for mobile and more functionality for, for desktop. But uh, we're watching. Let's see. Ronald asks, when setting the local database path, are you setting the path as it would be on the device or pointing to a copy on your computer? Well, it depends. At design time, uh, if I want to see the data live at design time, then I have a copy of the database local on my hard drive, usually in the data for the samples, because uh, I'm using that masked SQL.gdb, but I also have a subdirectory called C colon backslash data, and I put my databases in there. So I could I could put an if def for Windows in my uh, before connect and set the path uh, accordingly, hard coded. I could also just put the GDB in, in my documents on Windows, and then I could use the same code that I use for iOS and Android, uh, get documents path, uh, tpath delim plus the file, because on Windows, get documents path is going to return my user, uh, my documents, and then if I put the GDB in there, then that same code uh, concatenating to create the string, both on desktop as well as mobile, would use the same uh, expression, uh, the same code. So uh, you can do it either way, whichever way you want. Um, I've done it both ways. So it just depends on what I'm doing or thinking about at the time. But that code, get documents path, if you go to the doc wiki and look for get documents path, it, there's a table in the doc wiki and the help that tells you what each of those IOUtils commands uh, for tpath and, and tdirectory, what they do on each platform. 
and then you can put the files where you want them to be. Uh, when it's get documents path on the phone, I forget, Jim, it's like slash var. I, I get, con I, you know, I, I used to dump it out. It was either on Android or on uh, on iOS where it's like slash var slash the name of my application slash some other thing, to which is the that internal name of my sandbox for my application, the app bundle. On Android, it's dis slash data slash data slash app ID, I think. Or something yeah. Like that. And on iOS, I think it's slash var slash users. Anyway, so you no, can get that name. You can, you, can find it. you can uh, call, you could like output into a label or something that get documents path plus T path to limb plus the name of your file that you're looking for. And it will uh, give you the real path at runtime for your application on each platform. Um, let's see, Ronald, uh, Ron's asking, uh, is TFD mem table the way to cache a result set return from a query? Uh, well, two things, Fire DAC, there's an option on query or table to cache updates, and you don't have to use an FD mem table. If, if you think you want to, for example, save locally uh, the FD mem table and all of the changes, then use an FD mem table. Uh, you could assign different data sets to an FD mem table, have one FD mem table, and maybe you have two different queries, and sometimes you want to use one query and put it in an FD mem table, and then a line of code, one assignment statement to take the another query's data and put it in the FD mem table. So depending on the logic of your of your application, uh, you, uh, you could use TFD mem table in lots of different ways, including never having a database, never having a query, creating an FD mem table by, uh, by adding data to it, saving it locally. And you could use the FD mem table as an in memory and on disk data set all on its own without any SQLite or interbase or whatever. It, it, it won't have all the rest of the controls that you have, you know, when you're relating to a database with backup and so on, but, uh, uh, you can cache results in it and shut your machine down and turn your phone off and load it bow back up and make some more changes to the data. And if it came from a database, send that data back through and we'll, we'll show how to do some of that, uh, in lesson four, as it relates to connected, disconnected, uh, multi-tier, uh, thin client mobile applications. Let's see. Uh, Ron's saying, where is the username and password stored in Interbase to go? Um, how are keys kept private on mobile device accessing database? Are the keys exposed? And the answer is no. Uh, the keys, uh, you would have to log in. The keys are stored encrypted in the database. And Stephen Ball in his Rad in Action webinar, uh, I'll have to find that link again, uh, Jim. Uh, he talked, Stephen talks all about uh, how to build secure database applications and where the different things are stored. In my case, with users, I could pop up, a, you know, a little box that would query. There's that FD uh, GUI dialog, open dialog, where I could put in username and password, and then that would be used under the covers with an encrypted database to see if I have the rights to access encrypted columns or encrypted databases. Um, but those are those are stored inside the database and they're encrypted. Uh, Interbase also supports encryption over the wire, and we also support HTTPS. We'll talk about that in, on Wednesday with multi-tier. Ron has a question. It appears the design surface gets a bit messy with lots of non-visual components. If you consider allowing non-visual components to be related to a design screen but held off the actual screen surface area, there's a couple ways to do that. There's a thing called a data module which uh, is usually used to put your database access components, and you could still use live bindings to bind from an external data module. The other trick I use, which I didn't do in this case because I wanted you to see the components, is you just set their their top and left. Non-visual controls have a top and left, and so you could set their top and left off the design surface. So set them to 1,000, 1,000, for example. And then you can still access them through the structure window and then set their object inspector properties and event handlers and so on. But typically, a data module is the way to go with your non visual components. Yeah. Most of them would be better off living in a data module. Parameter passing subject to SQL injection, not parameter passing inside of your own application. If you're doing a web app where you have a 
input that's you know taking SQL or some part of a SQL statement. But in an app, I'm controlling everything, as you saw here. Now, in multi-tier, where I'm doing a REST call, which is HTTP and JSON, then you know I'll want to make sure that I check everything. And uh, Stephen also talks about that in his Rad in Action, uh, building secure uh, interface apps. He talks about you know checking the parameters that are coming over if they're coming through a remote call of some kind, or if the user types in you know if you pop up an edit box to say give me the the column name that you want me to do my where clause parameter setting, like give me the customer number. If somebody puts in the customer number and some SQL on the end, you look at your code and go. Uh, I'm looking for customer numbers, you know, numbers, not uh, not SQL select statements or deletes or whatever. I mentioned earlier in INI, there's there a way to set iOS style preferences and have them show up as preferences. You could have us on a settings page, uh, the names of different styles. I sh I showed styles in lesson two and how you can load styles at runtime or how you can put styles. I talked about you can put styles inside of your application and that let the user choose them. So yeah, you could uh, create a, a settings area that would have maybe names of styles or whatever you wanted as your interface. And then under the covers, it could load a style file in and apply it using this using a style book. And thanks, Jim.